superstar. That story hasn't really been told. How low it got, how dark it was. Grant Hill goes deep on the injury that almost crushed his career. I mean, I have scars that I was ashamed of. How one conversation changed everything I thought I knew. Was there a real world where you could have been better than Michael Jordan had you not gotten injured? And the famous singer who set him up for what he calls one of the best decisions and the best accomplishments that I've had in my entire life. You can't live in this world today and not be curious. In fact, if ever there was a time to hear from more than the usual suspects, it's now. This is the Carlos Watson Show. Maybe we'll surprise you. Maybe you'll be mad at us sometimes or inspired. Not only do I hope people will see more with the show, but I hope they'll do more and be more. People, the good stuff starts now. Hey, Grant, so welcome to the show. Oh, no, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be on. So, so much to talk about today. I'm almost not sure where to start, but I always start by asking people a little bit about how they grew up. So take me all the way back. You grew up in Northern Virginia. If I had met Grant at eight, nine, or 10, what were you like? Uh, loud kid, quiet kid, tall kid, short kid? Who would I have met? <laughs> well, I was definitely tall, uh, definitely very active and very much into sports. Uh, I, I think I was, I was a quiet kid, you know, I was a shy kid. I looked older uh, than what I was. So if I was eight, nine years old, I probably looked like I was 11, 12 years old. Um, you know, I grew up in Northern Virginia, outside of DC, uh, and, and really just sports being a, a major part, uh, obviously, as we look at it now, but a major part of my life. My dad was, you know, in the NFL, and I think at that point in time was, was on the verge of retiring. I'm increasingly seeing second generation professional athletes, uh, whether it's Kobe, whether it's the Mannings or others. Why do you think you made it versus maybe some of the other kids who you probably grew up with who were the sons or daughters even of, of some of your dad's teammates? Well, you know, it's funny. My dad would always say that, um, you know, particularly as I was, you know, later in high school and in college, he said, you know, you only have half my chromosomes. And if you had the other half, you might actually be a pretty good athlete. And uh, of course, he was he was kidding when he would say that. But I think having some genetics is, is certainly helpful. At least gives you a chance. I also think the advantage of having a father uh, who was a professional athlete and being exposed to, um, you know, what it took to, 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 to be successful or to maintain a level of success. Like I, I really believe that that helped me um, as I, you know, not just at that age, in my formative years and, and sort of emerging in high school. That, that perspective, that experience from a very young age, you know, I feel like I'm very lucky and very fortunate and uh, was able to take advantage of that and, and use that in my, to my favor. Are you serious? That is unbelievable, baby, Grant Hill. What a superstar. Wow. And, and I assume part of what you're talking about is the training and, and the regimen. Is that what you mean when you say kind of having the example and seeing what it took to be a professional athlete, that that's the kind of thing that helped you in high school? When, when most of my friends who had the same love and same passion uh, and same goals of, of you know, wanting to, to play in high school and, and then play in college and and maybe one day, as, as crazy as it might sound, play in the NBA, um, you know, there's a certain sacrifice. There's a certain uh, discipline necessary. There's a three-point shot by Hill. Rebounded by Jordan. Oh, stolen by Hill. I, I think all of that played a role in, in helping to sort of form, you know, my, my, my basketball uh, intellect, my understanding of the game, my understanding of preparation, you know, I, I exceeded that, you know, and I, I and so there's, and I was having fun and no one ever told me or forced me to do that. You know, I knowingly, voluntarily, I, I couldn't wait to do it. The Detroit Pistons select Grant Hill from Duke University. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Grant Hill. It's ridiculous for someone to be that fun and smart and gracious. Handling success, dealing with failure, it will challenge you, it will encourage you, and if you're lucky, it will reward you too. Grant Hill taking it inside, Hardy's got six. 
He can't be 37. Grant, I, I want to turn to your parents for a moment. I, I, I remember uh, your dad as a running back, but, but more than that, I remember hearing that he went to Yale. And I remember how unusual that was that not only was an NFL player coming from the Ivy Leagues, but in particular, a black NFL player and a black player who was an all pro had come from the Ivy League. Tell me and maybe tell other people a little bit about your dad. Like, how did this guy end up in the Ivy Leagues in the 1960s before there were many black people, forget players, many black people in the Ivy Leagues? Like, where did he come from? How did he end up at Yale? And how did he end up in the NFL? Yeah, no, it's, it's an incredible story. Um, you know, it really starts with, with my grandparents. And, um, you know, my grandfather, Henry Hill, uh, and my grandmother, Elizabeth Hill, they, they were from South Carolina. My grandfather had a, a second grade education. And so my grandmother taught him um, how to read. My father uh, was in middle school at Turner Station, Baltimore. Um, and there was an opportunity for a scholarship to go to a, a Northeastern boarding school. And, you know, he didn't want to go. I mean, he wanted to stay in Baltimore, but my grandfather knew that this was a feeder system to some of the great schools, the Ivy League schools. So he made him go. And it was a, an absolute culture shock. Obviously he excelled as an athlete, football, baseball, basketball, track. Uh, and so, you know, when he was a parade All-American in, in, in high school, and at all the schools looking at him, um, you know, he ended up, you know, deciding on Yale. And he'll say that that was one of the, uh, the, the best decisions he's ever made. And, and if you don't mind, tell me a little bit about your mom. And, and I'm aware that I'm taking a lot of time talking about your family, but, but it, it's from a place of admiration uh, and it's a place of interest. Um, and it's a place in believing that something special happened in that household and that it would be good for other people to get a peek into that. Yeah, well, I, mean, I think anyone who knows all three of us will say that my mom is the real star in the family. Um, you know, she grew up in New Orleans, uh, Louisiana, uh, obviously the segregated South. Um, her, her father was the first uh, black dental technician uh, in New Orleans. She had an opportunity to go to Wellesley, uh, which was in you know Wellesley, Massachusetts, a suburb of Boston. Upon arrival, she was uh, sweet mates with Hillary Rodham, uh, you know, now Hillary Rodham Clinton. And um, she was one of five black girls in the all-girl college of Wellesley. Uh, in the 70s, she worked in the Pentagon with Clifford Alexander, who uh, was the secretary of the army during the Carter, Carter administration, and really had a, a tremendous business and practice for, for 30 plus years. about this love affair with your wife because you know for any of us who are romantic seeing a couple seemingly do as well as you guys have done is a thing of beauty and 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 I still remember Shawnee O'Neal uh Shaq's ex-wife when asked uh are there any NBA players who are faithful she literally only could come up with one name that was your name Grant Hill so Anita Baker uh the legendary R&B singer um, really kind of connected us and, 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 you know, made a love connection, if you will. You know, my wife is my best friend and I can't imagine, you know, going through what I've been through or what's ahead, you know, without her. I'm old and slightly gray right now and I look forward to getting older and more gray with her. You know, one of the best decisions and the best accomplishments that I've had in my entire life, you know, our marriage and our family. about you as a pro because part of what I'm hearing you say now and part of what I've heard you say earlier is that you love this thing so much and you happen to be very good at it. Was there a real world where you could have been better than Michael Jordan had you not gotten injured? Is that a real possibility? Well, of course, in my mind, yes, it was a possibility. Uh, you know, I mean, who, who knows? I mean, I, I think when I, when I came into the NBA, I had success right away. And, and certainly there was a void because Michael had retired. And, and so a lot was sort of dumped on me. And of course I got hurt after my sixth season. In 
And it was really, for, for obvious reasons, so disappointing. But it was interesting because certainly for me, having to fight to get back to play. You know, what I went through with my injuries and missing four years, um, it's never really, that story hasn't really been told. And, and, you know, just how low it got, how dark it was, and how I was pretty much told that, that I wouldn't be able to play again. And to, to really kind of fight the, the mental, the emotional, and the physical fight necessary and not to quit. And then to come back and play nine more years uh, and, and have to reinvent myself in a way. When I look back at my Duke years and I see all the success we have, to get to that point and how fulfilling, you know, that, champ that championship represents all that we put into it. And to me, it's the same thing, overcoming those injuries. You know, I, I had to fight. I mean, I have scars that I was ashamed of and embarrassed of, but now there's a sense of pride because I know what went in to resuming my career um, it, it took it took a, a, a tremendous amount of fight, grit, toughness, resolve, and uh, and I'm just grateful that I, I, I was able to experience that and, uh, and get back and, and, and play till I was an old man at the age of 40. You, you know, Grant, I, I did appreciate that, but I didn't appreciate it as deeply as I do now. Was it grit that you already had that sustained you through those four years, or did you do something or learn something? that got you through four years? Because four years is a lifetime. I think sports naturally conditions you to fight. It naturally conditions you to believe. I went into the Hall of Fame in 2018, and I think that's a period of time where you naturally tend to reflect. You tend to peek back. And, you know, what I realized was that I suppressed a great deal of things um, when I started to look back because in order to, to move forward during that time, back in the early 2000s, you know, in order to keep fighting, in order to look ahead, I had to suppress some things. At least I felt like I did. What kind of things were you suppressing? Because it's interesting as you say that, I've heard elite performers in, in not just sports, but other things talk about the ability to do Jedi mind tricks <laughs> on themselves. What kind of things were you suppressing that, that in retrospect, you realize, wow, like I, uh, I put that in a box. My whole injury situation and, you know, in, in some ways could have been avoided. And right when you're in the midst of this, this important time in your career, your body betrays you, you know, and you can't play. You can't, you know, you, you can't answer the call. And, and that was a hard thing because I always could answer the call. I may not always... Uh, be at my best. I might not always make the right play or make the right shot, but I was there. I was present. I was able to be in the mix. It was those sort of things and feelings and, uh, and emotions that you don't even deal with when you're in the midst of it. You're just focused on what do I need to do in this moment? What do I need to do today to help me get back and resume my career? a little bit about this moment that we're in with Black Lives Matter and the whole larger racial conversation. I'm sure a million thoughts have gone through your mind, so I won't make you lay it all out. But what are some of the things that you think about in this new moment that we're in when you when you think about race, where we are and where we can go? You know, due to these, you know, very unfortunate set of events, um, you know, we're now talking, you know, and 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 we're we're having these conversations and and, 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 and white people, my white brothers and, and, and white sisters are, 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 are having these, you know, wanting to know more, wanting to have a, a greater level of understanding. Uh, and so we're having open, honest, non-judgmental uh, discussions. And I think that's how you begin to make change. And uh, I think when you see the protests, when you see this younger generation uh, who are peacefully protesting, uh, against a, a number of issues, uh, you see diversity. You know, it's not it's not like the civil rights where you saw primarily black faces. You're seeing all different ethnicities, uh, all different uh, age groups, and uh, and so in the midst of George Floyd and and uh, Breonna Taylor and, and Ahmaud Arbery and uh, the Amy Cooper, I mean, all the the devastation that happened in, in a concentrated period of time, there, there has been, I think, 
some some positive that'll come out of a horrible situation. And uh, and so I'm encouraged uh, and, and, and hopeful that, you know, we'll continue to move things forward. If I, if I go back and if I had said Grant Hill's a young athlete in the prime of his career in 2016 when Colin Kaepernick began to kneel, do you think you would have joined him in kneeling? Do you think you would not have? Well, you know, it's interesting. I think back to my generation when we came about uh, in the 90s. And, you know, it was a different time. And I think now what you have is um, you have technology. And if you're an elite player who has an audience of millions, you can speak directly to them. So you can shine light on injustices. You can shine light on racism. And I'd like to think that, that you know, as a young player with a, with a huge platform, that I would have been doing the same thing. And uh, and so as someone part of that NBA family and community, I'm proud of our sport. I'm proud of LeBron James. I'm proud of, you know, others who are just using their voice, their platform to shine a light, you know, on atrocities that are occurring in our country. And so uh, I think it's a beautiful thing. And I'd like to think that I would be doing the same. Talk to me a little bit about now. I know you have this wonderful new documentary that you're doing. I mean, I thought of you as having become a business person, but I didn't realize you'd become a filmmaker. Talk about this very interesting new documentary uh, that you and Dwayne Wade and others have helped bring to life. I've never seen a black team. That is uplifting. That's awesome. It's a great story, uh, most beautiful thing. Um, it, it was basically a, a young man from, from Chicago, uh, the west side of Chicago, all black, sort of gang infested neighborhood, went to an all black school. Basically, a coach came in and, and there was a rowing program that came in for, for a couple of years. You know, those sports are very sort of elite, very northeast, private school. And to see and to hear about this in an inner city school was amazing. And how uh, these men were able to take those team sports uh, those values and apply them now later in life. So I'm just grateful and, and honored that, you know, that my wife and I have been able to be a part of, of this amazing project. And soon it'll be out for the entire world to, to see and experience. Steve Stanley, we can do it! I believe in you! We can do it faster! Our home is the training ground for her dreams policy. Ensure carefully. Dream fearlessly. Where are we going to see you in 10 years? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, and it's probably a, a healthy exercise to, to, to pursue. Um, you know, I, I think continuing to, 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 to do a number of different things. Obviously, I'm in basketball. I'm co-owner, vice chairman of the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, hopefully, we're, we're, we're having a parade celebrating an NBA championship uh, at that time. I'm also in television, I'm in broadcasting, I, I'm in business. Uh, I, I'm able to, to sort of do various projects like this documentary. Uh, so, you know, I, I think just sort of pursuing happiness, um, you know, in the sense that, you know, finding, you continuing to do things that I enjoy. And I feel like I'm so fortunate and so blessed that I don't ever feel like I'm working. You know, I'm doing things that I love, that I'm passionate about, things that give me a sense of pride, a sense of purpose, a sense of fulfillment. And, uh, and whatever that might be as I continue to evolve and grow and change. Uh, Grant, last couple questions. Now, now, you know, America seems to like skinny, light-skinned basketball players who majored in political science or history. We, have, we now have a little track record of voting for them. You gonna put your name on the ballot? You know, growing up in D.C., certainly a, a, a fan of, of, of politics and, and more importantly, the political process. Um, I guess what I've learned is that there are ways to participate in the political process without being a politician. That was a very politically adept politician's <laughs> answer. So you're running. I like that. I, I, I got Grant <laughs> on the uh, I got Grant on the ballot in, uh, in 2032. Finally, here we go. A couple of quick hits. Uh, Grant Hill's favorite book. Wow, my favorite book, the autobiography of Malcolm X. 
Uh, Grant Hill's favorite TV show or movie? My current favorite TV show. How about that? Um, billions. A favorite country you've ever visited? We, we haven't done a lot of traveling overseas and abroad, but certainly Italy is one of our favorite destinations. You've probably been able to sample from business, from politics, from music, from all sorts of things. But who have you not met yet who you would absolutely love to meet? Who would excite you uh, to meet? I, I do know one person I never met who's obviously no longer with us, and i uh, kicking myself for not making it happen was Nelson Mandela. I had visited South Africa and, and the museums uh, and some of his old readings and his office and all that. So, I mean, I I'm, I'm certainly was intrigued by him. Grand Hill's top five basketball players of all time. Do it any way you want, but it's yours. Okay, my top five NBA players of all time, Michael Jordan, Bill Russell, um, Magic Johnson. Um, this is where Oscar Robinson, and I'll put LeBron James in there. I so appreciate you. We've been so fortunate to have so many good people as we're starting this new show, but I think this may have been uh, my most enjoyable conversation yet. So thank you for, uh, for taking the time out and, uh, and being a part of this. I really appreciate it. Oh, well, I'm so flattered and certainly so honored. And, and thank you. Thank you for uh, allowing me to come on and share with you and uh, continue with, with the great job that you guys are doing with your show. I'm a big fan. Grit, determination, never giving up. That's all Grant Hill. That's it for tonight. Hey, if today was good, tomorrow's going to be epic. So don't miss it. Thanks for watching. Hey, tune into The Carlos Watson Show. It's like no other. You're going to enjoy it every weekday on YouTube.